Hello everyone! Para sa video na to, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa infinite limits. Let us start with some definition. Let f be a function defined on some open interval containing the number a except possibly at a itself. Ibig sabihin, palapit lang tayo ng palapit dun sa a sa function pero hindi tayo sasakto dun sa value ng a. Then, our function f increases without bound. As x approaches a, we write this as the limit of our function f of x as x approaches a is equal to positive infinity. So, ibig sabihin, kapag dito, palapit tayo ng palapit kay a, yung value ng ating limit is just increasing. Habang papalapit tayo ng papalapit kay a, yung value ng limit natin pataas siya ng pataas. We are approaching a very large positive number. So, next, f decreases, ibig sabihin, Yung value naman ng function natin ay pababa ng pababa habang papalapit tayo ng papalapit kay a. So, kapag gano'n naman yung concern natin, our limit of our function f of x as x approaches a is equal to negative infinity. Kung kanina, positive infinity, pataas ng pataas yung value, yung value ng function, dito naman, negative infinity, pababa ng pababa yung value ng function. So, if the value f gets smaller and smaller as the value of x, become closer and closer to A. So, for this lecture video, pag-uusapan natin paano tayo makakapag-solve ng infinite limits. So, we will be using some theorems. Number one, let R be any positive integer. So, we have limit of 1 over x raised to R. Meron tayong variable x na karesya to any positive integer R as x approaches 0 from the right. So, we read this as x approaches 0 from the right. Ang sagot daw is automatically, according to the theorem, positive infinity. Kaya kapag ka nakakita tayo ng ganitong form, 1 over x raised to a certain positive integer, as x approaches 0 from the right, ang sagot natin ay positive infinity. Next, the limit ng ating function na 1 over x raised to r, as x approaches 0 from the left, so medyo mag-iiba lang tayo kapag we are approaching from the left. Kapag yung value ng r is even, yung exponent, ang sagot ay positive infinity. Pero, kapag yung value ng r is add, so titignan lang natin yung exponent ni x, kapag add siya, then ang sagot natin ay negative infinity. So again, kapag ka ganito yung form, kapag ka approaching from the right, automatic positive infinity. Pero if approaching from the left, then titignan natin yung exponent ng r natin. So now, gamitin natin tong theorems na to para sa ating examples. Let us have this first one. We have to evaluate the following limits. We have the limit of 1 over x raised to 9 as x approaches 0 from the right. According to our theorem earlier, if we are approaching 0 from the right, regardless ng exponent ng x natin, kahit add pa yan or even, automatic ang sagot natin ay positive infinity. Pero for our next example, the limit of 1 over x raised to 13 as x approaches 0 from the left. Since we are approaching from the left, titignan natin yung exponent ni x. Since this is odd, ang 13 ay isang odd number, then according to our previous theorem, we have our answer at negative infinity. If we are approaching from the left, tapos yung exponent ni x is odd, then, ang sagot natin ay negative infinity. And then, next for our example number 3, the limit of 1 over x raised to 6 as x approaches 0 from the left, dahil from the left na naman siya, titignan natin yung exponent natin. Since this is even, 6 is an even number, then ang sagot natin is positive infinity. So, this is how we apply our first two theorems when it comes to infinite limits. Medyo madali pa lang naman siya, now, let us proceed with our next theorems. Let f of x be equal to c pero not equal to 0. If we are given with our limit of our f of x over g of x, yung nasa numerator, kapag in-evaluate natin yung limit, dapat ang sagot niya ay isang constant pero hindi equal to 0. Tapos, yung nasa denominator naman natin, the limit of g of x is equal to 0. Kapag ang nangyari, yung limit nung nasa numerator is a constant, tapos yung limit nung nasa denominator is 0, then pwede natin gamitin yung theorem na pag-uusapan natin for this one. So we have the limit of f of x over g of x 
As x approaches a, ang sagot natin is positive infinity kapag nag-evaluate tayo nung nasa numerator f of x, ang sagot ng c is positive. So, we have our positive c here. Tapos, yung denominator natin is 0. If we are approaching from the right, since positive si c, tapos we are approaching from the right, check nyo lang yung sign. Dahil nagkapareho sila, according to this theorem, then ang sagot natin ay positive infinity. And then, on the other hand, kapag yun nasa numerator naman, our f of x, yung c natin, nakuha nating sagot is negative. If you have a negative c, tapos we are approaching from the left, tignan nyo na lang ulit yung sign, negative yung constant sa numerator, we are approaching from the left, so tignan nyo, yun nasa taas, since pareho sila, according to this theorem, then our answer is positive infinity. Then for our second one, kapag ka nagkaiba naman, Yung ating f of x, yung nasa numerator, we have a positive c, pero we are approaching from the left. So, yun na lang yung magiging q nyo. Tignan nyo yung sign. Since positive, yung constant natin sa numerator, pagka nag-evaluate tayo ng f of x, tapos we are approaching from the left, then ang sagot natin ay negative infinity. And then, sa kabila rin naman, kapag ang f of x natin, this is negative, nakakuha tayo ng negative c, Tapos, we are approaching from the right. Again, dahil magkaiba sila. So, we can say that our answer according to this theorem is negative infinity. Kaya, ang crucial dito, kailangan nating evaluate yung ating numerator, yung f of x. Titignan natin kung ang sagot ay positive or negative. Kapag nalaman na natin yung sign, then titignan natin kung saan nag approach yung function natin. If we are approaching from the left or from the right, kasi magkakaiba yung value either positive infinity or negative infinity. And again, lahat to gagana kapag yung g of x natin, our denominator, kapag nag-evaluate tayo, this should be equal to 0. So, we will be using itong mga theorem na to for our next example. Let us have our first one. So, we have the limit of our 2x plus 1 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the right. So, crucial to from the right. First, check muna natin yung denominator. So, dapat ito, kapag nag-evaluate tayo, this will become equal to 0. So, as we check our denominator, so we have x minus 3. Kapag sinubstitute natin yung 3 sa value ng x, 3 minus 3, our denominator will become 0. Tapos, let us check our numerator. Isulat ko na lang to dito. This is equal to 2. Tapos, yung x palitan natin kung saan nag approach We have 2 times 3 plus 1. Tapos, ulitin natin yung nasa denominator. We have x minus 3. Our x will become 3, so this is 3 minus 3. We have 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. This is equal to 7 over 0. Now, tignan natin. Yung constant natin, yung nasa numerator 7, this is positive. Since our 7 is positive, tapos we are approaching from the right, then our answer, pareho sila, this is just equal to positive infinity according to our previous theorem. So, ganun lang siya gawin. So, let us have more examples. We have the limit of 4 minus 3x over x minus 7. As x approaches 7, dito naman tayo sa kaliwa. As x approaches 7 from the left. Ngayon, titignan ulit natin yung denominator. As we substitute 7 kay x, we have 7 minus 7. Yung denominator natin will become 0. Kaya gagana yung theorems na pinag-uusapan natin. Then, we substitute. We apply our theorems on limits. We have 4 minus 3. Our x will become 7. We are approaching 7. So, this is 3 times 7. This is all over x minus 7 is 7 minus 7. This is equal to 4 minus 3 times 7 is 21. All over 7 minus 7 is 0. So, this is equal to 4 minus 21. We will be having a negative answer that is equal to negative 17 over 0. Since yung constant natin, our f of x, yung nasa numerator, is negative, Tapos, we are approaching from the left. So, tignan nyo na lang din. So, we have negative and negative. Then, dahil pareho sila, our answer according to our previous theorem is positive infinity. So, this is how we evaluate infinite limits. So, now, let us have another example. So, we have limit of x plus 1 over x squared minus 4 as x approaches 2 from the left. So, from the left tayo. Again, i-check muna natin kung magiging 0 yung denominator. So, if we substitute 2 dito sa x squared, 2 squared is 4 minus 4. Our denominator will become 0. So, pwede tayong tumuloy. Then, tuloy natin yung nasa numerator. This is equal to 
x plus 1 we approach 2 so this will become 2 plus 1 all over x squared will become 2 squared minus 4 so this is equal to 2 plus 1 is just 3 all over 2 squared is 4 minus 4 this is 0 then let us check the signs our numerator 3 this is positive we are approaching from the left positive to we are approaching from the left magkaiba sila so according to our theorem this is equal to negative infinity so this is how we apply and then for our last example we have the limit of x minus 5 as x approaches 3 from the right naman tayo and then we have x squared minus 3x as our denominator. Then again, we check. We have our x squared here. So pag sinabsitute natin si 3, 3 squared is, this is just equal to 9, minus 3 times 3. So this is also 9. So our denominator will become 0. So as we continue, so this is equal to, yung 3 ipapalit natin kay x numerator. We have 3 minus 5. This is all over x squared. This is 3 squared minus 3 times 3. So as we continue, 3 minus 5, this is equal to negative 2 all over 3 squared is 9 minus 3 times 3 is also 9. This will become 0. So as we can see here, yung numerator natin, negative 2, this is negative. We are approaching from the right. So according again sa ating previous theorem, magkaiba sila, this is equal to negative infinity. So ito yung proseso kung paano tayo makakapag-apply ng theorems on infinite limits. Again, for our first step, check muna natin if our denominator will become 0. Tapos titignan natin yung numerator kapag ka nag-evaluate tayo if positive or negative. And then we check kung saan nag approach yung limit natin according dun sa theorem, nasa left ba or nasa right. Then makakakuha tayo ng sagot either positive infinity or negative infinity. So I hope you have learned something on this lecture video. Thank you for watching.